So we are back on the street and the weather seems becomes better. Same as me. Um, so uh, if you are tired, you can go back, you know, to your hotel, whatever. But if you are like have strength and powers, let's go keep our journey because it's just about to begin, you know, the most interesting part. Uh, so behind us there is a uh, Goglevsky Boulevard and, you know, the sculpture and uh, cathedral. But in front, you will see. Let's go. This is a McDonald's behind me. A lot of people think that the first McDonald's in Russia, but it's not true, it's the second one. And the first one's uh, uh, closer to the Red Square and the Tverskaya Street. We'll show you this place, this special place. When it was opening in the 90s, the line of the people, of the customers, was like almost for a week or for a day, for a day. The line was so big, the, huge, the most biggest line of customers ever in McDonald's, of course. So. But don't, you know, don't use McDonald's nothing more than to like a toilet, my own opinion. Just take it as a toilet. It's not a good food at all. It's not a food even. And this guy over there is Alexander Pushkin, well-known in the whole world uh, writer. He's probably the best one in Russian's history. And this place is very famous in Russia because before the internet arrived, those mobile devices and everything, it was the place where people was meeting if they get lost. Because there's three lines at the same time, green, uh, pink and gray line of a metro connected here. And all the people well known this place. And like 20 years ago, if you was parking, passing by this place, there definitely would be a few guys with a bucket, buckets of flowers and a girl who was very dressed up waiting for somebody. This is, was a place for a meeting. So if you get lost and you have no internet, no cell phone, no ability to communicate with anybody if you're that hard person. So just, you know, agree with your friend that you, we will meet at this guy, at this guy's statue, Alexander Pushkin. Well known, read some of his work and remember this place. If you get lost, just get over this place. Okay, and nearby the Pushkin statue over there, there is a gate. You can walk through them, feel yourself as a king. And here, one of those two buildings which I would like to suggest you to take a look at. So first one is Vestia. Tsik, USSR and Tsik. Tsik and Tsik, I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. USSR, you know what it is. And the Izvestia is the name uh, of the biggest, one of the biggest newspapers in Russia, which was like product, produced and maybe even still they have, you know, a copy of it, but it doesn't matter. The building is look like totally like USSR supposed to be, uh, you know, gray and nothing extra special, just lines and, you know, don't look at me. Everything was in the USSR saying, like, shoving to you. Don't look at me. I'm just the same as everything else. Everyone else, everything, everyone, everything, everyone, everything, everyone else. I'm just mixing, you know? So that's uh, Izvestia Hall. And the, on the other side is uh, a gallery named Hector. Why Hector? Because when USSR just started to, you know, you know growing up, and Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, also known as Lenin, was just, you know, growing up his uh, political influence. He was a bar, there was a bar, and Lenin was drinking inside of the bar. But at the moment, he wasn't like well-known and nobody was scared of him or respect him like, oh, it's a leader, nothing. Just like, just another bold guy trying to get drunk, okay. And the bartender says to Lenin like, you have too much, please stop. And the Lenin started starting to act like, uh, he was, you know, put his hands under his coat, shoving like, we can take over the bar. And the people being attracted by his, you know, uh, power and strength. So they just take over the bar and drink everything. And that's why Lenin realized that he can be a leader. And he became one of the greatest in our history. But everything starts out in a bar in this gallery. So here we are at another magical place in the Boulevard uh, Ring circle, probably. Uh, we was walking on for a whole day. Uh, 
here you can see like the low high low rise buildings which is remind us about like Moscow of 17 or 8th and 8th century beautiful low calm quiet and it's you know if there would be no cars you can feel yourself like an ancient Moscow not an ancient of course but a couple of centuries ago maybe one century and this is a sculpture of uh, Rachmaninoff um, I know that th this guy this respectable man was uh, one of the greatest um, like Vanessa May but the Russian and like living a little bit earlier I don't remember the name of this uh, you know like a guitar but with a, with a stick like so you probably heard of it like Rachmaninoff just you know put it in Google and you'll find a few songs of him, a few tracks, and you'll definitely like it. So, and if you'll be, become a fan, that's the place you need to go. So here we are at the Vladimir Vysotsky statue. This man was very famous and still very famous because I think he's one of the two, the most influent people in our uh, Soviet culture. Uh, Viktor Tsoi, uh, Grupa Kino, and Vladimir Vysotsky, a musician, actor, poet, just, you know, the man of like a big heart and great thoughts. He's inspiring a millions for being better person. And I think that man is really one of the most honorable in our history. And I really respect him. And if you are interesting, if you don't know much about Russian culture, listen to his music, take a look at the film with his playing in, uh, maybe, and you'll know what it means. It's at the guy said these words. And this one, this little square, is the fish market. Well, the Russia is not a country with like with a big number of different fishes, but we still have rivers, you know, and the fish, salted one with the beer, we like it. And if you can see, there is like a catch. Same with catching the fish. Over there, there is a fish boutique and restaurant. And over there, there is also a restaurant, but you can see fishes are like in the decoration of it. So why is the fishes is over here around? Like a, maybe, 20 years ago even, but even longer, there were a river nearby. There's a lot of rivers in Moscow. So all the transport comes here and those loaded, uh, you know, like a horse powered, those wooden things with wheels, was brought the fish from the port to the, all the city. And they was going uprise here on those two streets. So when they was loaded, on the first moment when they going upstairs, a lot of fish was falling down from a, from a cabin. And the local ones, especially the poor ones, was taking this fish from the floor and was eating it. And in the future, they started to cooking it and selling it. So that's why this place where those people were working, they get better and better in business and become uh, restaurant keepers, you know. And maybe it's the same, like, family own those places, maybe not. But uh, this is the corner of a free fish restaurant. This is a fish market here in Moscow. So, and this is the Museum of Modern Art in Moscow. And there is two interesting things about it. First, here just on the street, you can see a lot of works. Most of them belongs to Zurab Tsariteli. Maybe you heard about him, one of the most famous Russian uh, Soviet sculptor and uh, like architect. And some of his works are just represented here. You can just take a step in and take a look. But inside, there is many things interesting for many people, like uh, history of theater, cinematography, cinema or sports. But we won't go in because, you know, all the museums is for you to explore them. So what the point to take a look with the camera? So you just go inside, but here you can, you know, watch at least those ones. Strange sculptures. I never was able to understand, like, what is this? No, really, what is it? I know it's a Russian fairy tale, and uh, but I mean, do you think it looks beautiful? Is it art? So, and here, also a sculpture of Vladimir Vysotsky, the famous guy we've been talking about a couple of minutes ago. As you can see, the, he have like his own sculpture by Zurab uh, Tsariteli. That means that he's deserving. And this mosaic over here is also made by Zurab Tretelli. He's well known for this style and a lot of bus stops uh, was performed like this. And in Barcelona, you can see the same thing 
by Antonio Gaudi and we have our Gaudi. Zurab. Zaritelli. Masterpiece. You know, it's not, there is nothing, you know, special to talk about. Like, take a look at this and just sometimes I think it's so beautiful being in Moscow. Like, in, like in, uh, there is a lot of beautiful cities in the world. In Europe, in the United States, maybe in Asia, it doesn't matter. Everywhere there is a beautiful city. Yes, yes, I'm agree with it. But the Moscow, one of the most beautiful. And sometimes I'm just stepping, a slow step. Take a stand, you know, I'm stopped starting to look around and so many details, beautiful details, I've been missing my eyes before. Why is that? I don't know. All the buildings, those it's like handwork, like a time machine brought me to the ancient city of happiness and joy where everybody is happy and smiling. Yeah? No, not everybody. So, okay. Uh, well, while, while we were... Anyway, so this is my friend Anastasia. She just joined us here in Kamchatka, so drink uh, uh, some ginger tea, and she will go uh, to take a walk with us a little bit. But uh, we were planning to go to a big theater. Have you ever been in a big theater? Uh, please, please, more slowly. Ah, yes, yeah, big, uh, big theater. Big theater, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Very, very good. Very, very good. good. So, yeah. She's been there, so we won't go there for the second time. So we decided to go to the famous uh, shop where you can buy a present for a kid and for yourself, because if you're a man, you're always a kid. So it's a, like child world, kids world. So let's go. Kids world? Go, go. Go, go, she said. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Where is the train? Uh, so here we are, still at the, uh, the biggest uh, shop for kids. And here on the top floor, there is a, like a side viewing place. Have you been there before? Yes. You should have been there. Did you like it? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, and uh, 50 rubles for a person, less than a dollar, and you can step out to see the Moscow from a roof, and also to visit a, a museum of ancient Russian toys. So, let's go. Hello, free ticket, please. Here you go, here's your ticket, just in case. Here's your ticket, also, thank you. That's a check, it's from my boss. My ticket, let's go. Before, there is a viewpoint over there, but first we will go to Childhood Museum. Toys. Yeah, follow toys. the princess. Toys, toys, okay. Toys, toys. That's how the Childhood Museum is look alike. Here you represent, you can see the, all the toys that Soviet kids have in their childhood, such as, I don't know, Nivalyavka uh, doll. So you just push it, you can push it, and like she's going like this and doesn't fall down. And when you get tired of this, you can break her apart, take a small piece of plastic, wrap it with the paper, then burn it. Uh, and it's become like a smoking, very, 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 very smoking. And here we got the famous one, Cheburashka. Uh, there's a lot of Cheburashkas, but this one, for example, is over here. It looks a little bit scarier than it was in Soviet time. And there's a Carlson, uh, Hrusha, so many, many famous dolls, which were like a symbol, symbolic for kids, for me. Some of them like small tanks and there's a piece of metals. And for like one dollar, you can take a step on a viewpoint and realize why the Russian people are so... Uh, that's why, because they have the same toys in their childhood. Take a look at this bear. Does it feel happy? Do you want to hug it? Or you want to run away? Ah! That's it. That's it. No, but I'm just kidding. We have a good childhood. Playing in its building yards. We take some um, plum boom, plum boom, and you know, you just make a hole in the sand, make kind of form of it, then you melt it and put it in. So when I was seven, I become a metal, metal boiler. I don't know, probably, you know, so. It was fun. 
Gena the crocodile, the friend of Chuburaska. That's the old, the old story you should know. See you, see you on the viewpoint. I think it's a funny guy. <laughs> to be honest, when I see like, girls making a photo like this, you know, on the winter period, like in the cold weather, they dressing out to, you know, make a good, a better picture, and they put the, 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 their feet on a, on, a, on the top, you know, like this, and they put in their heads and like making the lips like look stupid, like a duck, like you know. Oh no no, they do it like, and I really don't understand because the the, the best photos are the one which is look natural, and everybody who is able to think know that. So I don't want to say they're not able to think, but I'll just say I think they're stupid. Don't be like that, please. You better enjoy the view by your own eyes. Okay, so for today, I think that'll be the last stop. Uh, this viewpoint on a uh, jet ski mirror. And from here, you can see the uh, Christ the Savior Cathedral from where we started our trip, this trip. So uh, you can also do it on the backward next time if you're on. And uh, you can see Kremlin, Kuranti, a lot of interesting places from here. And I don't know, just, you know, spend a few moments in here and take a close look at the capital of Mother Russia, the Moscow itself. So uh, as for me, I still thinking that I need to buy a product for a present for uh, Princess Nasta and for my nephew. So while I'm here in the center of Moscow, I'll do it right now and see you tomorrow. Please become our friends and followers. Push the hard button. Do all the things you need to do for us to get popular, to get some money, so we can make a good trip with uh, with the models, with you know crush car crashing with fireworks and with the Ramstein and everything else. Cheers.